Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. We're having a fun episode today where we get to sit down and talk to one of our heroes, Miss Donna Michelle, who is the corporate credit manager at Electrical Equipment Company. Welcome, Donna. Thank you, Chris. It's great to be here. Well, great to have you. Looking forward to sitting down and, ta- and talking with you here today. Uh, we are recording this in the midst of COVID, so we're having to do this uh, you know, via phone call. So I really appreciate you, you carving out some time with us. And Donna, we always like to kick these hero episodes off with just a, a quick understanding of your story, uh, your your journey to the role that you're in now. So maybe give our listeners a little little understanding of your personal journey. Certainly. Um, well, I've been with Eco for seven years now as a corporate credit manager, but I started back, uh, my first job was actually in New York City with Unilever, and uh, I was started in the AP department. And somehow from there, I wound up along the way in credit and collections. And I eventually went to Revlon and then to Pergo. And now I'm here at Eco. And Revlon brought me down to North Carolina. So I always think of that as a a great journey. Absolutely. Now, where did you go to school at, Donna? I went to Seton Hall in South Orange, New Jersey. I got my uh, BS in marketing and MBA in finance from there. Okay, very good. Now, you you mentioned Revlon. Now, I didn't realize you worked there. So is this the Revlon in Oxford? It is. It is. I was working in New Jersey for them, and they bought the facility in Oxford, and a lot of us transferred down. Okay, so that's what brought you to North Carolina. Yep. Very good. Well, yeah, I actually do not live very far from that plant at all. So I've, I've been inside that Revlon plant with uh, some, some partners at Eco looking at projects. So that's a pretty massive facility over there. It is. It is. They were all, I enjoyed everywhere I worked. I can't, I can't complain at all. Um, but of course, especially enjoying uh, being at Eco. Absolutely. Now, the, you know, you also mentioned, was it Pergo where you were? Yep. Pergo flooring. I was, that was over in Garner. Um, they, they were bought out by a Mohawk. So okay, the motion for, for me to move. I got you. I got you. So you kind of have some experience with manufacturing, you know, working directly for the manufacturer as well then. Absolutely. Well, I'm sure that brings a, a lot of insight, you know, as, as the corporate credit manager at Eco, you're dealing with so many different types of businesses and customers and uh, you see a lot of different things. You're also in the forefront right now of a, of a lot of challenges. So what are you seeing as some of the greatest challenges in the industry right now? Well, you know, as a um, credit department, we always have our usual challenges. And the first and foremost is collections. We have always the challenge of bankruptcies and fraud every day. So the COVID-19 is just really enhancing um, these challenges at least tenfold. You know, we have customers coming wanting um, additional terms. They need more time. And there is concern definitely about the increase in possible bankruptcies. So we're just trying to be more vigilant than ever. We're trying to work with our customers as much as we can. I know there was one we were working with that uh, they were making uh, supplies you know, to help with all the um, lack of medical equipment. And so, you know, we're just trying to work with everybody, appreciate what some of our customers are doing and uh, just trying to help everybody get through this. Absolutely. It definitely has presented a a lot of challenges, you know, with with COVID where just people having to learn how to work differently, you know, even with your own department. So you're actually from from a credit department standpoint at Eco, your entire team is working from home, correct? We are. We were always set up to be able to work from home. So we always are able to give coverage, you know, if there's snow, ice or whatever. We always want to be able to work and support the company. So this was not um, a difficult transition for us. You know, everybody, we just picked up all of our stuff and, and moved moved home. 
Well, what's been, I guess that's, that's been a little new for you where every, your mm-hmm. entire team's working from home. So what, maybe help our listeners learn what, what, what have you had to learn through this? What have you, what has been some lessons that uh, you, maybe you didn't see coming that uh, you've picked up on? Uh, well, we're doing, we meet every week as a team just to go over, um, you know, what's happening and any uh, new challenges anybody's facing, uh, what kind of requests we're getting from customers. But other than that, you know, we can do everything online. So Donna, thank you for walking us through some of the challenges that you're seeing and, and that you're facing. We, we just know that the, the world is moving so fast and I commend you for staying on top of it and wanting to work with those end users, with those customers to just, just meet them where they're at and, and try to come up with a good resolution and, you know, there are a lot of listeners out there for Eco S Y, and they want to understand, you know, the, the different roles from from engineering to to services to manufacturing to just a role like yours from a credit department and in, in, in that that credit world that is a part of each one of our customers. So maybe some if that person that's listening, if you want to give them some advice to kind of enter this industry, what would that advice be? Well, it's funny, Chris, because when I'm at my credit meetings, people will say, you know, this is not a career. Anybody comes out and says, well, gee, I want to be a credit manager. (laughs) It just doesn't happen. Most of us seem to somehow fall into this role. But I have to tell you, it's I love it because I get to deal with so many people, all different departments, uh, customers internal and external, and it's always something different every day. It's different challenges. So I definitely recommend for people to take a look and the best place to go and and start seeing what we have to offer is by our national group. It's NACM, the National Association of Credit Management, and they are the national group. Then they have uh, local groups as well. And if you're in credit or looking to get in credit, these are great groups and meetings to attend, to meet with. Sometimes we're meeting with our competitors. Sometimes we're just meeting with other local companies. And we're there to learn and exchange information and help all of us grow in the field. So this is a, a great place to start. And if you're new to the job, definitely get involved with NACM. There's also CFDD, which is the Credit and Financial Development Division, which focuses on education. As I said, there's local meetings we attend monthly. NACM has an annual meeting called a Credit Congress, and it's all offering different types of learning about things in the industry. There's a lot of networking going on. And then you see a lot of the vendor, the expo they always have. And some of the vendors that I use at ECO uh, for invoicing or for you know doing ACH payments, I've met them at these meetings. So it's it's a great place to start and to get involved with and continue to educate and learn and grow. That's that's great, Donna. So NACM and the, the other one was CFDD. Is that correct? That's right. That's right. CFDD. We meet locally, and actually, um, several of us in my department have done the role as president of the the group and we meet with local companies and again we're all involved with credit and exchange credit then we also have monthly meetings in north carolina and in virginia with actually our competitors and we're all in the credit world and again there's that exchange of information if there's fraud going on say someone's coming into the branches and purchasing something and then, you know, not paying whatever we all, everybody alerts everybody. So there's a really good network there of all of us just trying to protect our companies from fraud. So it's, it's really a great thing to be involved with. Absolutely. I mean, that network just sounds like it's invaluable just for, you know, the the credit world to be able to plug in and work with others that, that are facing the same pressures that you are and that you can bounce stuff off of ideas now, from a training standpoint, I mean, I'm curious on this because we're big on training uh, for EcoS. While we've had some good some good tips from professionals out there, is the training for NACM is that typically online type training or is that course type work? How does that work? 
So yes, the NACM has all different kinds of training and some of it is coursework and that coursework helps you to attain different levels of certification within NACM. And all the training is different facets of the credit world. And once you complete them, you get a level of certification. And there's three different levels involving domestic and some of it inter international credit. And then they offer just regular programs that you can, you know, teleconference or call in or buy about Again, different aspects. You know, you want to learn about bankruptcies or fraud or how to write a credit application. There's a whole network of support that you can do to uh, train. And then when you go to like the annual credit congress, they call it, they have multiple learning sessions every day. And it's on a myriad of topics. And it's just excellent. I love it because it's just everything is right there. You've got, you know, learning and you can pick whatever you want to learn about. And then you've got people to talk to about it. And it's just, it's just really invaluable if you want to keep learning, because otherwise, if you're not involved, you're sort of getting isolated and there's just too many things happening in the credit world and the opportunity to be able to pick up a phone and contact one of your competitors, but ask them about a, you know, a customer or you know a possible fraudulent situation or whatever. And again, a lot of this stuff is confidential, and there's only certain things that we can ask. But it's it's priceless, you know, and it really helps us do our job better and protect the company more effectively. No doubt, that that's great, Donna. I mean, it's so important. Your network's important. That includes from a, from a plant standpoint. Any role you're in, if you're in a reliability role, or if you're in a E and I role, or if you're in a you know, the finance credit department, you need to have that outside network you can work with. So that was really great. And I'm glad that you were able to to share that insight because I'm sure that's, there will be some some listeners that find value and can, can go out and reach out to NACM and CFDD. And maybe even that, that's something that's, that wasn't on their radar. And now you, you've brought that. So so thank you so much. And, you know, one question I've definitely been, been waiting to ask you is uh, from people have certain perceptions of credit and credit managers and corporate credit managers like yourself. And oftentimes those perceptions are wrong. You know, a lot of times you guys just get the bad light shined on you versus all the good things that you're doing. So what is a common myth about your profession that you'd like to debunk? I mean, you got this chance right now. You can say, you know what, y'all think we do this, but no, this is how it really is. So what would that be? Well, there's a couple things, you know, sometimes people just refer to us as accounting or whatever, and nothing against accountants, but, you know, accountants are sort of isolated. They're focusing on company records and stuff. But the one that really sort of uh, gets to us sometimes is people referring to us as the anti-sales department. They, they feel like we're trying to prevent sales when, in fact, it's quite the opposite. You know, yes, we're, we are the keeper pretty much of one of the company's largest assets, the accounts receivable. It's our job to not only grow it, but to protect it. And it's it's a difficult role sometimes. But one of the most important things we can do is to try and grow sales by extending credit. And when we get a credit application, we, of course, review it and we try and take every avenue we can to allow that credit. And through that credit and the amount that we can allow, we can grow the sales. So it's we sort of constantly are looking at our customers and where can we increase credit limits if we see a customer that sales is doing really well with, uh, but we keep going over the limit, we will immediately take a review and see if we can go ahead and increase that limit. This is what we want to do. So we're all about the sales. We want to do more sales, but sometimes there are areas that where we can't go because, you know, we are concerned about possibly a customer not being able to pay us and not doing well. So I do think sometimes people think that, you know, we're always in the sales prevention area and that's not what we want to do. We want to see the sales grow, but we certainly want to do it in a manner where the company's protected. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I see instead of prevention, I think that's support. And I think from a customer and an end user standpoint, you're, you're engaged at a different level 
but at a at, at a much needed level. And you know, I think back to to my times managing in South Hill, and we had a, a one of the you know, the top level customers, and the credit manager at the time. We would have regular engagements at the con- at the customer site, and we would just sit down and talk business. It was very important to have an open book and open dialogue discussion of, of how business is going and future outlook on projects. And, you know, that really galvanized the relationship to a different level, not because I as the sales manager was there, but because the credit manager was there and they were able to talk at just a different level and, and, and to, to get to gain a level of understanding. And, and I'm sure you have experiences like that every day in your role, correct? We do. You know, we're getting a lot of credit applications and it is we have certain steps we're going to take to look at the credit worthiness of that customer. And there's a lot to take in, you know, and sometimes um, people are not always maybe pleased with our conclusion, but we have to be able to say no when needed. But I tell you, most times we're saying yes, and it's a good thing. I'm happy to do it. And then we just have to follow through and make sure we have the procedures in place that can manage those receivables and collect from that customer. You know, most of our customers, we have a very good working relationship. You know, if we call and, you know, ask about an invoice, we're not offending them. You know, this is what they, you know, they expect. We're going to want to collect our invoices. It's the ones that do get angry if we're calling that might indicate a problem then. You know, if they don't want to hear from us and in those situations where uh, things might get tense, we just walk through it and we try and find out what's happening with the customer and we do our best to work with them. And I'm, you know, extremely happy to say there, there have been very few occasions where we actually had to, you know, write something off or give it to collections. We, we do it so rarely that I'm just glad that we were able to work with our customers and come to resolution when we do have issues. But most times it's fine. Everybody, you know, is paying and it's our job just to follow up and make sure that money comes in. Absolutely. Now, now Donna, I got to, since we're in COVID right now and, and there are companies out there that are, you know, they're worried and a lot of companies are going after the, you know, the PPP program for protecting their payroll how do these, you know, factors or do they at all, you know, Im- impact your decision making from a credit standpoint or how you evaluate situations? Because I'm sure that's thrown a pretty big curveball at you. So how are you handling that? Well, Chris, that's a great question. Um, a lot of our customers are coming to us with, you know, special requests for terms or you know, letting us know that they're not having check runs right now because companies are furloughed. So really the main thing that I try and and discuss with my team is that we have to take a more empathetic approach right now, listen to our customers and do whatever we can to help them through this. You know, we we want them to succeed and we want to succeed. So uh, we need to work together with them to try and all get through this. Absolutely. I mean, that's a, that's a great approach, Donna. And hats off to you. You have so much coming at you that you're having to adjust and and evaluate on the fly. And, you know, you want to protect everyone, you know, from from eco standpoint, from distributor, but also you want to do what's best for the customer, too. So so just absolutely just just hats off. And, um, you know, let, let's talk a little bit about, you know, joy and fulfillment. You know what? You, you're obviously very passionate about what you do. That comes off. We can feel it through this conversation right here. It, 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 you take your role very seriously. What, where do you get that most fulfillment? Well, I have a great team. The people that work for me are excellent. They're dedicated. They've been with Eco longer than I have. And they're really focused on their job and doing what's best for eco and you know being responsible for the ar and the collections we can actually see the fruits of our endeavors all right we we can see are we collecting enough are we not collecting enough it's very clear to us so everyone is focused on collecting on making our customers happy 
on working effectively with our um, internal customers and you know sales and accounts receivable, everybody, and making it, it work. And seeing all of this come out in a positive way and that we are making our goals and we are getting those collections, um, that's what's great for me. So Donna, thank you so much for just giving us that insight to fulfillment that you get at work. And let's go ahead and shift gears and have a little fun here. We definitely like to have these hero episodes where we can talk a little bit and have our, our listeners understand a little bit of, about you outside of work. So maybe kind of, if you will, just give the listeners a little bit about you away from work, anything with your family related things, just you like to do in your leisure time. Just curious what you what you enjoy. Well, thank you, Chris. Um, I'm a, a Jersey girl. I was raised in New Jersey and I moved uh, to North Carolina in 1993. And we've loved it down here. We've enjoyed it, but I do have uh, family and friends back in New Jersey I miss, especially um, my mother and my brother are still up there. Um, but down in North Carolina, my husband is here and my wonderful children. I uh, have a daughter who's 23 and she lives in Massachusetts and my son is 19. And with all this COVID-19 right now, he's uh, here with us finishing up his college classes. And uh, we're just, we're very happy. It's a great place to live and, and raise your family. We've made some great friends and we're uh, very happy here and we're, you know, appreciative to Eco for uh, giving me the chance. I've met some wonderful people there. It's a, a nice environment to, you know, work and grow in. Because one thing, you know, just in talking about family and work and everything, it just made me think that, you know, we spend so much time at work. And it's just important to really, if not love, at least like what you do. And so many people are, you know, not happy in that respect. And so just, you know, it's, it's, I enjoy working there. I like it. The people are great. And we're really enjoying being uh, here in North Carolina. And um, I just appreciate the opportunity uh, speaking with you today. Well, thank you, Don. I mean, uh, I think you really hit on something there where you, you mentioned it's our desire to love what we do. And hopefully if you, if you don't love it, at least like it. And yeah. a lot of our listeners out there, we're trying to inspire with this podcast and, 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 and be a good voice and be a, an opportunity for people to learn about roles like yourself and inspire others to, you know, continue. Hey, you, you may be doing this role today, but you know, you don't have to be doing that tomorrow. You know, and, and one thing, you know, you, you, if you're in a plant in particular, or even from a distributor standpoint, you don't see the impact you make on the world. You know, I mean, you're, we're dealing with customers and, and end users who, who are manufacturing parts and products that are going to use in all different things across the world. And when you start thinking of it like that, it kind of, for me, just, it, it, it rounds it out, you know, it gives you that bigger picture uh, view of the world. So it's just, uh, it's good to hear people like yourself that are passionate, that enjoy what they're doing, that, that just comes off, you know, in every, in all your engagements and, uh, so I think you've inspired a lot of people today, and, and I really appreciate you taking the time. And we call this Eco Ask Why for a reason. We always got to get down to the why before we leave. So, you know, Donna, why do you enjoy doing what you do? What 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 is that? If you had to if you had to answer with purpose, you know, what would that answer be? It's different every day. Every day I go in, and it's a different challenge. And, you know, it's solving problems and it's what we can do to, to work together uh, to figure out some of these problems and get through it and achieve our goals, you know, and, and it's just uh, always a, a great challenge. And I just really enjoy it. I enjoy, you know, working with all kinds of different people and different departments. And it's just a, a great thing. Absolutely. I don't get bored. <laughs> Don't get bored. It's, it's, it's something new every day. And I think a lot of people that that would be, you know, they can't say that. And, and I think that the fact that you, I mean, you have so many different things coming at you all the time. So again, hats off to you. You're one of our heroes. 
I really appreciate you taking the time with us today. I know you brought a lot of value to our listeners that are going to be enjoying this. And you never know, you may inspire that one listener out there that says, you know what? I want to take a look at this credit gig and see what uh, see what it's all about. And you, you could have inspired the next, the next corporate credit manager. So thank you, Donna. Definitely do it. And thank you very much. You have a great day. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. ECO is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.